So when I was a very young, young person, I was watching Star Wars with my dad, and I heard the violins in the theme song, and that. I had to learn how to do that. Uh, it took a few years, but eventually my parents got me into lessons, and I started playing, and that was all I did growing up. I locked myself in my room, and I practiced for hours and hours and hours on end. Made you a pretty decent little musician, not exactly the most world-renowned, like, extrovert. Uh, <laughs> So when I was in college, I was studying violin performance, and I was working uh, one summer up here at a music camp for kids, and they're bringing some friends of mine up from Austin, Texas, and these guys were good. It was my friend James, who uh, was a freak of nature uh, before he went and got his master's in London in like contemporary violin performance, and my friend Adam, who was an amazing guitar player, sassy as all get by, and loved to drink beer. So. I wanted to be them in like one way or another. But, uh, and I was completely honored. They asked me to sit in for a couple shows while they were in town, just to kind of make the trip a little bit more economical. The shows in question were two yoga classes. The first one, <laughs> yeah. The first one was geared toward dancers. The second one was for the general public. And we thought, odd. But when you're a young musician, you take every gig you can get. So we show up, we are unpacking our instruments, kind of warming up in the front lobby, and I'm talking to a lady, and she's very excited for the opportunity to have tango music, very excited that we're here, and really excited to get home for dinner. What's for dinner? Oh, I just had a daughter a few weeks ago, and we're having the placenta tonight. Huh? Yeah, it's in the freezer. And like, this is one of those moments where your world just gets exponentially bigger, whether you are willing for it to or not. <laughs> so I just did the only thing I could think of, and I asked, why? And she goes, oh, it happens in nature all the time. It's to bond me with my daughter. It happens all the time. Luckily, class was starting, and that is where the conversation ended, because I was just too scared to continue. Make our way into the studio. The three of us make our way into the corner, because obviously that's where a tango band in a yoga class should go. But we're kind of throwing a curveball. The instructor goes, okay, dancers, partner up with your musicians. I look across the room, and I see placenta lady. She's looking back at me. And I panicked, I ran away. I grabbed the nearest human being I could that was not her. <laughs> Just the instinct kicked in. And we were told, musicians play music, dancers respond. I thought, okay, my parents didn't raise no quitter. I'm a professional. They hired a tango band, I'll start playing tango music. Started playing, and she started dancing. It's this point that I should note, her background was a little bit more exotic <laughs> than anything I'd really experienced at that time. I mean, here I am, this 20-year-old kid. Like, I'd been doing ballroom dance and salsa, but I'd never experienced a full-grown, latter 20s-year-old woman just moving her body with, like, that confidence that a woman of that, like, uh, age really has. And she is not breaking eye contact. <laughs> I'm looking across the room at my bandmates and they're actually having like a really interesting kind of artistic conversation between their partners and kind of felt a little bit jealous because I'm in, over here trying to make tango music not sensual, which is darn near impossible when you have the gypsy temptress as your partner. We get to the second class though, and this one, it's the general public. Maybe we're supposed to just play music in the corner? We start making our way that way. Nope. We are told to line up on one end of the yoga studio and make the art of our soul as we sashay across to the other side. <laughs> I, I don't know that song. I leaned over to Adam and just, 
what do I play? <laughs> he leans back to me, the art of your soul. <laughs> In B flat. <laughs> You're such a good bandmate, thank you. <laughs> and something about the four walls of this yoga studio just let everybody's inner <laughs> just come right out. At one point, there's a woman collapsed on the floor throwing a temper tantrum. There's another woman in the corner speaking in tongues, I think. She is definitely, though, having an argument with herself, and she's definitely losing. And she's pissed. <laughs> All good things, though, must come to an end. And thankfully, this class did. And we decided the only way that we could truly heal from this experience was protein and beer. And uh, we ended up at Humpy's, and we're just kind of sitting there, staring at our beverages, just not saying a whole lot. Except James. James actually was pretty chatty during that whole, he just, oh, that's an amazing artistic opportunity to expand my creative bounds. <laughs> Uh, we finish up dinner and decide, hey, you know what? Let's get out of here. Let's uh, go back to the cabin, fill some growlers, and just play music till three in the morning, because, yeah. <laughs> and uh, on our way out, this mountain of a bouncer just intercepts us, and he is right in our face. And I don't want to deal with a bouncer on a good day, like, or like on the receiving end of a bouncer, particularly. And he's just, where are you guys going? You guys have, what are those, uh, are those instruments on your backs? What are you doing? You guys gonna, you guys in a band? You wanna, you wanna play a gig? Why don't you play a gig? We have a, we've, our band didn't show up. We need a band right now. <laughs> Saturday night at Humpy's. We're a tango trio. <laughs> Not exactly musica con grada. But when you're a young musician just starting out, take every gig you can get. Thank you.